Hello, my name is James. Like many of you, I'm sure, are in organic chemistry like myself. Or you might be one of the few that like to scrounge around on YouTube looking for videos pertaining to something that interests you. I, for one, am like that in both categories. But the reason why I'm making a video, or I will be making multiple videos on organic chemistry, is because some people don't understand, you might have a bad lecturer, and YouTube videos help you, but not every YouTube video will help you, and hopefully mine can help aid you a little bit more in understanding organic chemistry. My plan is to start off with some basics, like functional groups, and working our way up to, through nomenclature to understanding IR and everything else that has to come into organic chemistry. In order to even understand IR, you have to understand the basics, which are functional groups. And today, I want to talk about functional groups that contain oxygen. In organic chemistry one, for most of you, you'll learn six oxygen containing functional groups. I'll be talking about them today, just to start off our lesson. We have an aldehyde, a ketone, an alcohol, an ether, an acid, and an ester. What's interesting about an acid and an ester is they both have two oxygens paired them in the functional group. Whereas the other four only have one. To understand how any of this even works, you have to understand how the oxygen bond works itself. You see here, here's an oxygen with a bond on its left and a bond on its right. And then there are two non-bonding pairs of electrons. So it's kind of like you know, you can see that as like a crucifix. Um, then the other one here, the only other one, is an oxygen with two bonds on the left side or the right side. They both look like two arms here. And then you also can't forget your two non-bonding pairs of electrons. As you see here in my right hand corner, left hand corner, I have those on a little bit of a bigger version. And you know an oxygen's happy when it has all the proper bonds just like a carbon, of course. So we can start off with some basics here. Here we are with an aldehyde. We have our functional group, which would be a carbon with a double bond to an oxygen. And don't forget about the two non-bonding pairs of electrons. The carbon is also connected to a hydrogen. And on the left-hand side here is an R. The R represents a separate group, which could be a methyl, ethyl, or so on, with anything that you might Okay, I mean, a simple version of it, for example, as I have here, is formaldehyde. Formaldehyde, or methaldehyde, as it's called, the IUPAC name, has one carbon. It looks exactly like the aldehyde functional group right here. The only difference is it has a hydrogen added onto it. So here's the hydrogen, another hydrogen, and an oxygen with two pairs, double pair, connected to the carbon. And also, do not forget your two non-bonding pairs, because that can always bite you in the butt if you don't draw it out, especially on a test or something like that, depending how much of a crazy grader your teacher is. Just like an aldehyde, a ketone and aldehyde look exactly alike for the most part. The only difference is there's just another R, or which would substitute for a methyl group or so forth. And if you look here, I have some examples. Like I showed you the formaldehyde, we have methyl phenyl ketone. I may be saying, you know, for other things, common names, we'll get into that later. How you pack names, a lot of people get confused with those names, like with acetic acid and so forth. But anyway, as I was saying, so here we are. We have our phenyl group here, which is the cyclohexane with all the double bonds in it. And then we have a methyl group right over here, which is where the methyl comes from. And then we have our double bond with the oxygen. And remember, look, look at the red dots. Two non-bonding pairs of electrons. Simple, self-explanatory. Over here, we have an alcohol. Alcohols are pretty simple. It's really just OH. You're just looking for an OH. Here we have the R, which can represent, in this case, the cyclohexanol. The cyclohexane right there. There's our OH. And don't forget about the two non-bonding pairs. 
So we have our cyclohexanol. Usually it would be a cyclohexane, but in this case there's an alcohol, so you would replace the ene, or the ane, with an ol. So you can represent it as an alcohol when you're naming it an IUPAC format, of course. So that's that. Getting on to the next level here, what's really common is an ether. Ether. I didn't draw a bat here, but it kind of looks like it, but that is diethyl ether. Here we are with the R group and another R group with the oxygen in the middle with two non bonding pairs of electrons. And look, everything is full and it reaches its octet rule, which makes it quite a happy molecule. So we could draw here with a bat instead of so you can help visualize it better. You might want to draw some eyes and smiley face so you know he's happy because he has his uh, non-bonding pairs of electrons and everything else reaches the octet roll. Jumping on to our groups of two oxygens, we have an acid in the ester, as I mentioned earlier. With an acid, like in ester, there are two oxygens, but on the acid, the hydrogen is connected with the oxygen. Where on this case, over here at the ester, the oxygen is connected to an R, or which would be a methyl group, or an ethyl group, or you know, so on and so forth. There's only one R on the acid. So as you can see here, for example, we have acetic acid, which is a common name, by the way. And we just have a methyl group over here on the left, but the rest of the format is the same as what's presented here with the acid. On the right hand side here with the ester, we have the carbon with a double bond to the oxygen, and another bond here to the, oxy the other oxygen, and then connecting to that would be another R group afterwards. An example would be methyl ester, which is very wide. Like there's, there's a ton of different versions of methyl ester. That's a really generalized version. So I just drew a small molecule here, and this is what it would look like in just more of a structural, you know branch forming, like a branching. I drew a lot of branching because, you know, drawing Lewis structures can be, I don't have a board big enough for Lewis structures. The Lewis structures are usually a lot easier to explain, which I would draw later on in other videos, but this is just a generalization here. But if you can look at the comparison, they're almost identical. Nitrogen and hydrogen in here represent that R. This R represents the rest of this molecule here. With the acetic acid, the R right here is the methyl group, right here, the hydrocarbon, and the dimethyl ether, diethyl ether, I'm sorry, has its format right here. The oxygen is all that matters in an ether. The rest of it could be any other type of setup, hydrocarbon, whatever it may be. And there's tons of ethers, of course, like ester, scotch, it goes on and on. Same with acids. That's why they're called functional groups. It, the molecule can't function without these groups, well, at least especially oxygen-containing molecules, uh, or oxygen groups. But um, yeah, aldehyde, ketone, if examples of ketone can be used in a lot, there is a lot involved in ketone, of course. Um, for a fun fact, of course, acid. How do you come up with the name acid? How did it originate? It was bitter. So anything that's usually bitter has an acid in it. Um, like I said, yeah, this is just generalized right here. Do not forget oxygen, non-bonding electrons. Nitrogen has two non-bonding electrons. Oxygen has two pairs. Nitrogen has one pair, should I say, make it a little easier for you. But remember, the arms on the oxygen going out here two, and then there's also one on the left and one on the right. It might help you defy that when you're drawing these molecules out. If you have any questions, comments, feel free to comment below. Let me know what you think as my first organic chem video. Thank you.